it was very clear from the first day that this eruption would turn into a tourist sensation. And it helped a lot that a live stream camera was placed up there even before the eruption started. Thousands of photographers have gone there before me and captured more or less everything that there is to capture. So my original goal was to try to capture something different, even use the time-lapse format a lot, perhaps overnight. So I carried a full pack of equipment up there, ready for just about anything. But to my disappointment, it was not just cold that day. And for those of you who are perhaps planning a trip up there, there is a parking place by the highway just a few minutes east of Grindavík. And from there, it's about two, three hour walk. But the worst path of the hiking route has been fixed since I was there. But it was very steep. My plan was to get up there just before sunset and walk back down after it got dark or later in the night. And as I finally got up that last hill, the gas pollution detectors were going off and the rescue team started to evacuate this prime location for photography. Not looking good, so I took my time, like a stubborn sheep, last in the herd. Little by little I backed off with my tripod for as long as I could. And on the way I managed to find a little shelter on one very uncomfortable place to do some shot that I could at least make into a slow-mo video. But here we have a sample of the wind and the conditions that are facing me. Those were no dream conditions. So I was for a while watching my original plan go up in flames when I noticed the so-called uh, Valley of Idiots, or as my viewers have often described, those who are standing so close to the lava. Long walk back and I was getting uh, cold by then. So I figured, why not join the idiots? But it just looked uh, so warm down there. And after all, there are worse things than to be one of Iceland's hottest idiot. So it was down there by this nice furnace that I managed to play around a bit, do my own scientific experiments, like to find out how long time does it take to make popcorn with lava, which is a suggestion from a subscriber. So I kind of mixed well with the idiots, and it was in a way just like a campfire party there. American tourists drinking champagne and such. Very strange. So I got the idea to make a selfie from a video file with the glowing lava in the background. And in a way, I got more than a bargain for when this rock came down. And you can see here how it looked from an icon. But I want of course to say that I was at safe distance. There was a little slope there, so this was not as dangerous as it looked. Only warm and cozy. Just what I needed. So I stayed there for a while to warm myself up and to get some rest before I walk back down to my car. And I must admit that the way back was uh, way harder than the way up. The steepest uh, part of the trail was not good, so helpful Icelandic boys felt uh, sorry for me and they helped me on the way down, carry some of the stuff down the worst hills. But I made it up there and got my practice. It was then around 2 o'clock in the night when I got back to the parking lot and I admit it was very hard to lift my feet into the car and never before have I been so tired from a photo tour but I was very glad that I did it. To photograph a live volcano is something that you don't do that often during your lifetime and as for me I've always had the feeling that this would only be my first trip up there. So during the Two short time that I had up there, I managed to try out multiple photo and video settings, do plenty of mistakes in order to learn what works best for my camera, and I managed to capture some of the red stuff for this video. So despite of how tired I was, I needed one more shot, and I had found the location earlier in the day, and I knew that I would never forgive myself if I would drop this chance to get a photo with the town grind in the foreground with this orange background. So the rest of my energy went into this, so it wasn't hard to fall asleep that night. But the day after, I decided to do a little drive around in the city, and that brought me up on a hill that offered me good view toward the volcano with the metropolitan area in the foreground. Again, the wind was uh, 
not being friendly with my long lens. So here are some of the still shots that I took from there. And during this time, the power of the only remaining crater was increasing and it was sending glowing lava high up. But you have to bear in mind that I'm using a very powerful zoom lens here and they pull the background closer to the city. So the volcano is 30 kilometers away from here, but it's still possible to see some of the action, even without the lenses. And when I got out of the city, I found another location just north of the city. I did some shots there and surprisingly, I found around one square meter with enough shelter to do time lapse with the zoom lens. And here we are around 45 kilometers from the volcano. And while the camera was going, I was thinking about what will this turn into? This is simply way too close to the city and the important infrastructure. And still we have no clear answers about the future. But I can however tell you that only a day before I finished the script for this video, it was made official by Icelandic scientists that those are the so-called Reykjanes Eldar, Reykjanes fires, or just the beginning of a chapter that will go on for a long time. A period that might last for 200 years. So this is not a single isolated event. The lava protection there has been on the rise, so there are still no signs of this to come to an end. But what we do know for sure is that just by this eruption, we have this old uh, so-called shield volcano, only one of many in the region. And my main question has often been, is this eruption there just a continuation of the creation of that uh, massive lava shield formation that already covers a large part of the peninsula? After all, we got the news that uh, the source of this eruption is close to the mantle or 17 to 20 km down. And uh, many experts have stated from early on that this eruption might go on for decades due to its deep source. But then again, geologists and experts do not agree upon totally what this is all about. And that is in a way what makes uh, geology so fascinating for me. We don't have all the answers. But one of the things that I would really like to see answered is what is under the peninsula? How many lava chambers are controlling each and every volcano system? But it's six of them there. Or is this just uh, one giant volcano system? So experts have been very reluctant to make uh, serious forecasts, but I am sure that they are doing their best. So it was good in a way to get it confirmed that this event marks a new chapter in the history of Iceland. This is just a part of a larger picture. And in best case scenario, the city will be mostly free from serious pollution and future eruptions will not be close to the city. In that case, this might go on year after year as Iceland's hottest tourist spot, even hotter than the Blue Lagoon. But in worst case scenario, I am thinking about the town Grindavík, surrounded by lava fields and if lava would flow into the harbor there, it is simply over for the town. This earthquake timelapse shows you well that the crater row just north of town has still something to say even after the eruption started. Something is moving under there, for sure, and all trucks and bulldozers in the region have been registered by the civil defense in order to protect the town in a worst case scenario. We do also see unusually strong earthquake swarms hit the westernmost part of the peninsula on a regular basis. And when we look at the 14 month time lapse, it shows very well that there have been movements all around the peninsula. So this event that just opened up might not cure anything. More is going on, but what? We don't know. But we know for sure that this peninsula that is called Reykjanes, meaning smoking peninsula, and our capital Reykjavík, smoking bay, have today very appropriate names. So when I'm finishing here, after yet another long day of chasing subjects, I decided to use the bright Icelandic evening to make a detour to a town called Akranes on the way back north. Yet again, I found myself uh, parking by the docks, searching for subjects, people fishing, eider duck uh, romance. And uh, some of my best moments when I'm photoshooting are those when I don't have any schedule to catch up to. 
then I can just relax and see what swims, walks or flies into the frame. And this turned out to be maybe a bit too relaxing for me, so when I got back to North Iceland, where I had the chance to test how summer tires work in snow, I found out that I left my tripod by the docks while I was warming up in the car, waiting for some action. But this is Iceland, and this is not Reykjavík, so I called a friend in the nearest town the morning after. He called his daughter, who lives in this town, and an hour later I got this photo. So my tripod is still in West Iceland, waiting for me to pick it up, since I am going back to a volcano soon, in a bit better form than last time, with a bit more knowledge about volcano photo video settings for Nikon, but at least I managed to get enough this time in order to present the full story about the volcano town Grindavík, just by this unusual geological event that we don't know all that much about. And until my next video, I am sending you best regards from a volcano island, Iceland.